All right, geriatric pharmacology. So much like the pediatric patient, we look at the geriatric population as um, a special population as well, because we know that as the aging adult gets older, the ability to metabolize and excrete drugs lessens. And so um, we pay close attention to um, the geriatric patient because they're at risk for um, toxic levels of medications if they're not um, metabolizing and excreting appropriately. And um, they're at risk for side effects um, more than just the general population. So like I just mentioned, geriatric pharmacology requires special attention um, to the different um, areas of pharmacokinetics. So absorption, distribution, metabolizing, and excretion, just like we talked about in the pediatric um, lecture. Unlike in the pediatric lecture, in the pediatric population where we um, dose drugs based on weight up until a certain um, medication, or uh, up until a certain weight, um, for the geriatric population, drugs are dosed based on a multitude of things. So the adult weight, the adipose tissue that's available, um, certain laboratory results which indicate um, organ function, and other current pop, um, health problems we know as the, as the aging adult gets older, unlike the child, they oftentimes are on multi multiple medications that we have to look into and make sure that we're not having any type of interactions. So huge amount of, med of adults take medication. So 85, nearly 90% of adults 65 and older are on some sort of medication. Um, the other thing about, you know, this geriatric population is that people are living longer. You know, we're more efficient in our ability to treat diseases and to treat certain common things that prior to our day and age, people didn't live from or they died, you know, from them. So people are living longer, which means they're on more medications longer and, and we, have, we have more to look at and, and consider when we're talking about the geriatric um, population. So um, looking for drug interactions, um, huge, huge, huge th deal here, self-medicating with over-the-counter drugs. So many, many of our geriatric um, patients um, self-medicate. And if we're being honest, many of us do as well. Um, the other thing is, is they, um, they don't sometimes, it, depending on where their mind is, they don't know what medications are for what. So they're at risk for overdosing. They're at risk for mixing up medications, taking them at the wrong time, taking too many, retaking a medication that they've already taken for the day, um, therefore overdosing. Um, so they're at risk for drug toxicity, one, because of their aging body, but two, because they're aging mind and there might be some things that get mixed up. So like I said, polypharmacy, so um, just multiple meds at one time. And one thing that really contributes to this is, is the fact that oftentimes, sadly, our geriatric population doesn't have a patient-centered medical home, meaning one physician. The other thing is, is that they might get medications from multiple different pharmacies. And so the pharmacist may not have a full picture of all of the medications that they're on, and therefore, can't indicate whether there might be some life-threatening um, interactions or um, medications that um, would be counterindicated with a with another medication that they're on. So um, those are those are big problems within this um, population. Okay, we look at drug absorption. We look at um, all the different portions of pharmacokinetics. Um, their GI motility is slower. Their blood flow is slower. So we have to consider this when we're looking at pharmacokinetics. Um, it's extremely important that drug selection, um, it, based on this pharmacokinetic factor and, and, and the half-life and how it's absorbed and where it's distributed in and how large is it. it if we have a very healthy 70-year-old man who's you know, well-nourished, probably not a big deal. But if we have a very frail osteop um, woman who has osteoporosis, who is very low weight, poor bone density, 
with bigger problems for that pharmacokinetic. So we have to think about this when we think about this population as a whole. Adherence and non-adherence, huge thing here. Non-adherence, one, because they might not want to take it. Two, because they might not realize they have to. Um, so um, it's an ongoing responsibility of nurses to make sure that they understand that people in their life are there and support them, and they understand what their medication regimen is. So um, placing their medications on a calendar in different boxes so that it's easy for them to know which medication they take when and on what date. Um, that's huge for these for this population.